Okay, so in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how you can end up with um, an image similar to this. Um, in the uh, last video, I showed you how you could get Superman flying uh, over the uh, the background with the loose use of layer masks to remove the uh, the bits you don't want. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you another um, use of layers to change the background color uh, because the original color of the cityscape was like this full color and I have used something called a color adjustment layer uh, in order to uh, sort of change it to, to this uh, sort of blue monochrome color. Uh, I'll also show you how you can uh, add some text and do some uh, special effects like glowing text. Okay so uh, let's head over to my old picture and here it is. Um, you'll notice that the cityscape covers the entirety uh, of the uh, of the background, and uh, what we want to do is we want to crop that down uh, so that it only takes up one half. That means I can focus on the front cover here, and I can have something entirely different for my back cover, for instance. Uh, the way that that works is dead easy. Now, first thing you need to do, you've got to make sure that you have the correct layer selected. At the moment, you can see I have my Superman uh, layer selected. I want to make sure I've got the city layer selected. Okay, so I select the city layer. Uh, this tool here um, is the crop tool. Uh, the crop tool allows you to um, trim out the bits that you don't want from the image um, uh, or trim out bits that you don't want from a layer. So you've got to make sure uh, that current layer only is ticked. If it's not ticked, when you cut something out, um, you'll find that the entire image gets resized and that is not what you want. So make sure that you have current layer only selected. Make sure you're on the right layer and then what we're going to do is we are just going to drag a box around the bits that we want to keep. Now you'll probably want to zoom in a little bit in order to uh, get some extra accuracy. Remember you can hold down the control key and scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And once you're zoomed in as well, here's another top tip, uh, you can move around easily by holding Holding the middle mouse button, uh, if you've got a mouse with a wheel on it, you should be able to click the wheel in, and when you move it around, um, you, you're effectively dragging the image. So uh, when we resize in this, if you've got guides on your image, you should find that the crop uh, area just snaps onto those guides nicely. It should also snap to the uh, the, the top and bottom of the uh, uh, of the image as well. Um, so. There we go. Uh, once we are uh, ready to remove the bits, all you have to do is hit the enter key. And there it is. Okay, so we've trimmed off uh, part of the uh, background. Okay, so we're off to a, off to a good start. Uh, now, one thing that I wanted to mention about um, Superman over here, uh, I've actually um, used a tool to make him look like he's flying out towards the screen. It's a fairly subtle effect but I'll show you how it's done. So I select the um, Superman layer and um, this tool over here uh, looks like a, um, a cube. That's the perspective tool. If you click on that uh, then when you click on your uh, your layer you should... Um, what have I done here? Oh, no, I've messed up. Reset that. Um, we need to... Uh, make sure that you've got your um, the, the layer selected uh, and then when you click on here uh, you'll get these little handles uh, that you can see. You can move them around and the idea is that as they move they will deform parts of the image uh, so that it looks like it's more flying towards you on a, on a, on a flat plane or something so as an exaggerated um, version of it um, you can see here if I wanted to make it look like Superman was really flying out towards us um, I, could, uh, I could do something like that um, you can still move them around as well while you're doing it um, but that's basically how that works. You'll notice when I uh, when I first um, activated it, um, I had it was just a black and white silhouette of uh, Superman. That's because I had the wrong layer selected. I had the layer mask selected. So make sure that you've got the first one selected. When you're happy with your final positions, uh, you can just click on uh, transform like that, 
and um, and and there you go. Um, I'm going to undo that because I preferred the way it looked before. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, if you uh, if you start adjusting it and you think, oh no, that looks terrible. Um, you can click on reset and it will reset it back to normal and um, uh, once you're happy with it if you go to transform you can just uh, finalize that transformation okay so try out the perspective tool uh, sometimes it's kind of useful sometimes it's not it depends what you want to do okay so now on to the color adjustment layer now this works in a similar way to the layer masks uh, but we're actually going to create an entirely separate layer so I click on the new layer and uh, for some reason it doesn't uh, display properly um, there we go um, so give it a name I've called mine color adjustment because that's what it's gonna that's what it's gonna do now if you know the specific color uh, you might want to name it that specific color but it doesn't doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it's clear it's an adjustment layer uh, the other thing that you need to do this mode button by default it will say uh, normal but we want to change that so that it uses um, LCH color which is all the way uh, down the bottom there's a whole different bunch of um, layer modes that you can use. You can play around with those different layer modes and see how it affects things. I will show you how the LCH color um, mode works. Okay, uh, we'll keep everything else the default. Uh, that's all we're going to do. And then we're going to click on OK. And it will look like nothing's happened because really nothing has happened. All we've done is stick this layer in between the city and Superman. Now, we can select a colour. Uh, if we want uh, the, uh, the background to take on a sort of red colour like this, I'm going to select this bright red. It's going to look fairly hideous, but it, I'm going to show you as an example. When we paint on this layer, anything that's painted will uh, be adjusted so that it fits in with the colour that we have, have painted it. Uh, so I'm just going to adjust my brush size here so it's nice and big. And you can see when I paint over the... Um, when I paint over the the scenery, um, we we've kind of got this like sepia tone there. Um, uh, if I wanted to change the uh, uh, the color, if I wanted blue or something, when I paint over in blue, you can see it all takes on this blue tinge. Um, got green there. Um, I mean, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but you 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 see how it works, right? If you want to just get a grayscale, uh, you can use white. Um, and there you see you've got um, monochrome on there. Now the thing is, um, you might want to have some areas uh, which are um, colourful and some which are not, in which case all you have to do is colour in the bits that you want uh, to be coloured and um, you can uh, then erase the other bits. So let's say for instance I want um, uh, let's say I want everything to be black and white except for the river for whatever reason you can see I've colored everything in um, white uh, an easier way of doing it uh, would be to use the paint bucket tool uh, so if I use the paint bucket tool select white as my color um, and then um, just fill in the color adjustment you can see everything's now black and white and if I use the eraser tool uh, then when I erase the um, the white over the the river you can see then the color from the original starts coming back okay so that's something that you can do maybe uh, you want the the sky to be uh, colorful as well but you want all those buildings to be uh, to be gray notice how I don't have to worry about Superman being there because he's in a layer above uh, what I'm currently currently working with okay um, so there you go there's a, a black and white city with the the other bits other bits colored so if I wanted to have it um, my um, sort of dark blue color like I had before I can uh, select whatever color it was I think it was something like that um, let's fill that in and there we go it's uh, looking vaguely reminiscent of what I had at the start of the video okay so you can play around with these different things just just 
to show you what the uh, the different layer modes are, if I change this layer mode um, from uh, LCH color to LCH hue, we get a slightly different look. It still works in kind of the same way, uh, but you'll notice instead of everything being a wash with blue, um, the darker areas they 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 look more um, more colorless. Um, so you can you can play around with those different uh, different settings just to get an idea of which one which one you think looks uh, looks nicest for you. Um, as well as LCHQ, there's LCH lightness, which is probably not what you want because it makes something look horrible like that. Um, there's also um, chroma, um, if if you want the infrared looking view I mean you can play around with this stuff and 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 see how it looks there's also these ones up here there's HSV hue uh, and there's HSV um, saturation and uh, there's HSV um, color and uh, various other ones they work in a similar way um, but they've got some some very subtle uh, differences uh, there so uh, so play around with those I'm just going to stick this back to uh, LCH color there. All right, so uh, I'll stick with this green background. See as I've started on this green background. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text. Now I want the text to be above everything, so I'm going to select the very top layer and then I'm going to add a new layer down here. Click the new layer button um, and um, here's the new layer dialog. Now you've got to be very careful because it will default to whatever your previous uh, layer mode was. So I just want this to be normal. So I'm going to set that back to normal and I am going to call it um, text. Actually, no, I'm going to call it title. There we go, it's more, more descriptive. Um, so once I've done that, I click on OK. I've got my title layer here. I can now write some text. I'm going to use the text tool, which is this a marker here and you can drag a box out now this is where you can set the size of the text you can also do it over here and you can choose the font and uh, and, and you get like little um, uh, previews of what the font looks like there um, it's probably easier instead of selecting px which stands for pixels it's probably better to select a uh, pt which stands for point which is what you're probably more used to uh, when you um, when you use things like microsoft word and uh, and publisher so i'm going to set it to let's start off with 72 point font and i am going to write uh, superman uh, now you'll notice that doesn't quite fit in because i've set the font too big not to worry i can just select all of that text and I can resize the font until it fits in. You're probably also saying, Smith, you madman, uh, why have you chosen a bright green title when the back of the uh, uh, the city is bright green? Well, don't fear, I can click here and I can change the color. So I'm just gonna set my color to black. Um, and there we go. Okay, once I'm happy with that, um, I can um, move the, uh, the text into place wherever I want it. Um, you'll notice when you create a new text um, layer it, it, it creates a, a floating layer here. Now um, what you might want to do is um, is anchor the, uh, the floating layer um, but to be honest uh, it's probably fine just as it is. So remember when I said create a new layer you probably don't need to do that. However um, it was useful to show you that new layers take on the mode of the previous one. Anyway, I'm rambling a bit now, so let's get back to what we're doing here. I've got my text. Uh, I want to add some sort of glow to it. Well, the way that it works, make sure that you've got your text layer selected. Go up to filters at the top here. There's a whole bunch of different filters. Uh, you can play around with some of these. The ones that we want is under light and shadow. And if you go to drop shadow, You'll notice it's added a very subtle uh, shadow there uh, to the uh, to the text, right? And you can make it more visible by upping the opacity there. Um, you can also set the blur radius. The more um, the more blurry you have it, the more soft the shadows will look. But you can make it uh, so that it's a, a hard shadow as well. You can have a play around with that. But the really cool thing is you don't have to have a black shadow. You can change the color. And if you change the color to a bright color, 
um, then it becomes more of a glow than a shadow. Okay, so um, I'm going to set the colour to this cyan colour here. I'm now going to move the X and Y around until they're about in the middle and maybe I'll increase the blur radius there and perhaps increase the opacity until we get something that looks like it's kind of glowing. Once I'm ready with that I just click OK and there we go, there's my glowing text. Okay, so uh, in the space of about 15 minutes, um, I've shown you two more advanced techniques in GIMP, um, which will help you go on to create your graphical masterpieces.